You know, we try to laugh every now and then. I try to laugh as much as humanly possible. After all, what else can we do with all this mess? But I do have some terrible news I must bring you tonight to open up the show. You ready for this? The House and the Senate are back in session. And look, there have been a million sayings, statements, quotes, however you want to put that throughout history about this. But whenever these people are back in session, whenever the House of Representatives in the United States Senate, whenever they're meeting, your freedom, your prosperity, your way of life is under attack. You need to think about these people whenever they meet as now they're just standing over your bed with a knife in your hands while you go to sleep. That's what it's like when these people meet. So what is on tap here? What are they dealing with? Well, first and foremost, it's wild, really, really wild and maddening to see how the two different parties operate. And this, this is what I mean. It's wild to see the communists take power, use power, attack their enemies, reward their friends. But on the other side, the low T GOP, it's wild to watch time after time after time, their refusal to use power. We're better than that. Oh, we can't do that. Well, we've only got one half of one house. Oh, we can't do all an endless list of excuses. This isn't the hill to die on. Maybe if we had the Senate too, it's crazy to see how they operate. First and foremost, remember, never they impeached Donald Trump twice over nothing. <laughs> I know there's a ton of propaganda out there. He was impeached over nothing, nothing. And yet they impeached him and the Senate had a trial twice. You know, Mayorkas has been impeached. Alejandro Mayorkas, DHS secretary, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, he has been impeached. And so obviously, there's going to be a trial in the Senate, right? There's going to be a trial. That'd be the right thing to do. After all, we did it. Aren't you guys going to do the right thing? <laughs> no, they're not going to do the right thing. Everyone's already talking about it. Chuck Schumer's not going to have a trial. Why? Well, he's a communist. The communists would never attack their own. They would never... They would never risk their own power on behalf of what? The law? The constitution? The country? These are things that don't ever enter the mind of the communists. Of course, they're not going to have a trial for Alejandro Mayorkas. I'll tell you what, I'll make you another deal. You ready for this? You ready? Mr. Producer, write this one down. I didn't even discuss this one with the wife. She's going to be angry. If there's an impeachment trial for Alejandro Mayorkas in the United States Senate, I'm going to shave in a Fu Manchu mustache right here on the show. And you're just going to have to stare at it for a week. If there's an impeachment trial, Fu Manchu mustache. Come into the, to the I'm Right show right here on the first. Mark my words. They're never going to do that. That's, that's, that's something Republicans would do. Well, I mean, I guess we do have to have a trial, guys. I, I, I know it's the right thing to do. It's what it says right here in the Constitution. After all, this is the suicide pact we have to go down with. It's the Constitution, guys. <laughs> Bunch of dorks. Communists would never operate like that, ever. And that, that, of course, brings me to the House. Speaking of the way two different parties operate, speaking of Trump, you remember Trump and his two AGs? His first AG was Jeff Sessions. Okay, he's the AG appointed by Donald Trump. And like the first thing he does, he was in office for five minutes. The first thing he does is, you know, I'm not going to get involved in this Mueller investigation. It wouldn't be right. It would be wrong. We're better than that. I'm going to recuse myself in the Mueller investigation. And Donald Trump had the first two years of his presidency completely blown up and kneecapped with an investigation completely bogus and invented by the intelligence community and the Democrat Party. Because Jeff Sessions had to do the right thing. And then his next AG, Bill Barr, not only did he do nothing, I remember the press conference like it was yesterday, he got up at the podium and bragged that he didn't intend to do anything. I remember like it was yesterday, he got up and he said, well, I mean, obviously we're going to look into things, but uh, we're certainly not going to do a political tit for tat. That's how Republican AGs operate. Democrat AGs, do you know what Merrick Garland has done in three years? He has essentially been the sword and shield of the Biden White House. They're kicking in the doors of pro-lifers. They're flat out killing guys. They've got, they've got the lady who had Joe Biden's daughter's diary 
They've got her rung up on charges. They're going to send her to prison. Joe Biden's DOJ works exclusively on behalf of Joe Biden to protect his friends, to attack his enemies. And again, the way the two different parties operate, we know now, right now, Merrick Garland, he's been told, been given a subpoena. Hey, you need to hand over this information. What information are they looking for? Well, they want the video of Joe Biden's deposition with Robert Hur. Remember that special counsel that was looking into Joe Biden? And he had some really not flattering things to say about Joe Biden and his mental capacity. Well, Jim, jo Jim Jordan, James Comer, they're threatening to hold Mer Mer Merrick Garland in contempt. And of course, he should be held in contempt. But why would Merrick Garland even take such a step? Well, Merrick Garland is a communist. He works for communists. And Merrick Garland believes, as all communists do, in using power. And maybe you're sitting there saying, well, Jesse, I don't want to be like them. Jesse, I don't want to be like that. Okay, I understand that. I'm not telling you you should want to be like Merrick Garland. I'm not telling you you should want to be like the communists. But I am telling you this. Set aside nursery rhyme conservatism for a moment. I'm telling you this, and you really, really need to hear me here. If one side believes in using power everywhere they have it, whether it's a, a, a DA spot in New York City or the AG, whatever, wherever they hold power, they use it to gain more, to attack their enemies, to reward their friends. And the other side doesn't because it's not the right thing to do. You know that this side has no chance, right? None. It's already over. If you, if the right doesn't come around to using power, using power to defend your people, yourself, using power, yes, to attack your enemies. If the right does not come around to that, we already lost. It's over. It's over. And let's do keep in mind what losing means. Another thing on the table right now in the House of Representatives is the FISA authorization. You see, not only is the federal government turning all of its guns, turning all of its attention onto you, the federal government has spent years authorizing itself to hoover up all of your data, all of your information, to spy on you. You understand no matter who you are. Maybe you're sitting there saying, Jesse, I'm not important. Jesse, I'm just a normal person. You understand that there is a very real chance, pretty much a 100% chance, that the government has your data. They've seen it. They've read your text messages, or at least the computer has at some point in time, your emails, your everything. Now, that was one thing. It was bad enough when we thought we, they were just attacking radical Islamic terror, right? We certainly don't want towers to come down again. But it's another thing entirely to sit back and consider that now they're building databases on things like people who buy guns and Bibles, people who question the vaccine, and yes, the GOP is getting ready to authorize this once again, working with Democrats. They're gonna send your money to Ukraine. You're paying 40% more for groceries. They're gonna send your money to Israel. They're gonna send your money to Ukraine. They're gonna continue spying on you. And all this is going to be done with the aid of the GOP. Wild how different the two parties are. Would the communists ever help the GOP do things like that against themselves? Not in a million years. GOP does, though. We should understand that we have something in our minds. You have something in your mind. I have something in my mind that is probably not true. And this is that something. This is that something. Revolution. When we think about revolution, rebellion, we kind of like it, don't we? Why? Well, we're Americans. We had a revolution here. We were under the British government. They were oppressive, taxing, gnawing on us. We had a revolution. We rebelled. We had a revolution. And after our revolution, things got better for us. Better for us. No more kings. No more British. Oh, my gosh, we're free. We have a constitution. This, that. Things got better for us. So the idea of rebellion and revolution for us as Americans Kind of is cool, isn't it? It's a good thing. Yeah, revolution. But you ever read any history? Study any history books at all? Like it when we talk about history on the show? There is something historically 
that you can see over and over and over again. And if you weren't thanking God that you were an American before, you should be thanking him now when I drop this one on you. There haven't been very many good revolutions in the history of the world. And when I say good, this is what I mean. Almost always when people rise up in anger and they cast out whoever the evil leader is, a king, a government, it doesn't matter what it is. And the people generally have a good reason. Yeah, we're mad. Government sucks. Normally that government does suck. It's evil. It's bad. But the people rise up and they cast out the government. Almost every single time, things get worse for the people in that country. You know, we, Haiti. Look, Haiti's actually a great example of this. They had some of the worst slavery in the Western world in Haiti. In Haiti, it was despicable. The sugar cane harvesting, it was torture. It was, it was just so bad. Treating people like dirt. And eventually they had enough. And they rose up and had a revolution. How are things in Haiti today? It's a dump. It's maybe the worst place on the planet today. Over and over and over again, you see this throughout history. The reason I'm bringing this up is there is something happening on a, on a macro level, on a 30,000 foot level. There's something happening on the right in the GOP. The old GOP. The old way of doing things. The, the, the Mitt Romneys, the Bushes, the whatever. Maybe you love that way, maybe you hate it that way, but that way is going away. You can see it. If you don't get too caught up in the minutia, you can see it with all the retirements in the Senate, in the House. You can see it with people who lose primaries now versus people who win primaries now. It's not happening as fast as you want or as fast as I want, but it is happening. And that is a good thing. The old GOP is garbage. It's useless. It's weak. It didn't conserve anything for us. Good. Send it out. The GOP is being remade. It is being remade. There is a revolution happening within the GOP. And it is good that the old GOP is going away. However, we live right now, you and I, we live in dangerous times on the right. And this is why. This is the time, this revolutionary phase we're in right now in the GOP, this is the time that will decide what the new GOP will actually look like. You see, when we talk about casting out the old, we sound very much like a, an angry Russian citizen under the czars. The old sucks. This czar family sucks. They're oppressive and we're hungry and everything sucks. They suck. They got to go. And we're right about that. Right? That old GOP sucks. They got to go. But then those same people, five years later, ten years later, found themselves being tortured to death in a gulag beside their family members. Why? Well, the old went. But the new was actually worse than what they just got rid of, the Bolsheviks, when they took over. What will the new GOP look like? Well, it will be determined by these times right now, by what we decide we're for, what we decide we're against, what we push for, what normal people, you, me, what we tell our congressmen about, our state houses about. We are deciding now what the new GOP will be. And... That brings me to the issue of abortion. Okay, let's get something straight here, because I'm going to make this really, really fast. I understand, I understand completely Republicans who run nationally and try to avoid the issue of abortion. Why? Because abortion is very popular with women in the United States of America. Married women, single women, Democrats, Republicans, poll after poll after poll says women do not want it banned. Sadly, we live in a country full of women who love to kill their babies. I know that's terrible, but that is the kind of country we live in. So I understand this way of thinking on the right. And I understand Trump's not really reversal on the issue. He's never been that pro-life anyway throughout his life. But I understand. Well, remember after the midterms. Remember the midterms weren't a red wave. It was a red trickle. And remember Trump put out this statement? Kind of a random statement, taking a shot at pro-lifers. It wasn't my fault that the Republicans didn't live up to expectations in the midterms. I was 233 and 20. It was the abortion issue, poorly handled by many Republicans, especially those that firmly insisted on no exceptions, even in the case of rape, incest, or life of the mother that lost a large number of voters, so on and so on. Okay, it wasn't my fault. It was the pro-lifers. Okay, so, so that's obviously how Trump thinks. Trump does his own social media. That was him in the middle of the night, pouring his heart and soul out there. And then it was what? Two days ago? It was Monday. 
Trump made this little announcement on social media. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Okay. Whatever they decide must be the law of the land. Send abortion back to the states. Many people had a problem with that. Many people did not. Maybe you love it. Maybe you hate it. Yeah, but that was Trump Monday. Hey, send it back to the states. All right. Most people could live with it. Even extreme pro-lifers like me. Okay, fine. Let's deal with it. I believe we have to deal with abortion culturally anyway. But let's move ahead. We got this word yesterday about this ruling in Arizona, Arizona Supreme Court. They did a ruling. What did it say? Well, it said that Arizona can ban abortion completely. It was a state-level decision. You know, they were just saying, return it to the states. It was returned to the states. The states made a decision. Yes, you can ban abortion completely in Arizona. Carrie Lake promptly came out. She's running for Senate as a Republican in Arizona, promptly came out and trash the ruling. In fact, she called on the Democrat governor of Arizona to come up with legislation more reasonable. She called for Democrat legislation that would allow more abortion. That's the Senate candidate in Arizona, the Republican Senate candidate. Okay, so you just said return it to the states. They returned it to the states, they banned it, then now you're against it. And I assumed Trump would be okay with that ruling because he just said on Monday, return it to the states, but then, but then Trump said this today. Oh, thank you, sir. Can you, Mr. President, did Arizona go too far? Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out, and as you know, it's already been straightened out. Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason, and that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. Yeah, the governor... Yeah, they went too far there, and the Democrat governor is going to bring it back into reason. Okay. Well, like I said, I I don't have any problem with Donald Trump making a statement about abortion back to the states. Fine. I I don't expect him to be with me there. It goes back to the state. The state makes a ruling. Abortion's banned. Remember what I was talking about? About the new GOP and revolutions and kind of that be careful what you wish for kind of a thing. Look, I'm going to tell you this, and this is just you and me talking, all right? You know, I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but I'm going to tell you this. The Republican Party, they give me big spending just like Democrats do. The Republican Party, they fund the FBI just like Democrats do. The Republican Party doesn't want to repeal the Obamacare law that's been destroying our health care system ever since, just like Democrats do. Democrat position after Democrat position after Democrat position. Republican Party leaders just tried to get amnesty through, just like Democrats do. I've been voting Republican my entire life. I've had a list of reasons why I can't vote Democrat, and I mean, I have to vote Republicans. I've got a few things that they're better on. You're better on the border, that type of thing. My list is getting awfully small on the Republican side. And after this revolution, whatever this is, If the new GOP, if they're all done with those foreign wars, but hey, man, abortion's fine. I don't want to lose an election. If that's the new GOP, then count me out. Do you remember, do you remember this particular narrative during COVID? In the schools, everybody should wear a mask. Asking kids to wear a mask is uncomfortable, but you know, kids are pretty resilient. Kids are resilient. There's nothing adverse or bad about masks. We've used masks for decades. We mask kids in our cancer wards routinely. We have now a plethora of ongoing research and studies um, and documents that are showing us that masks do not put children at risk. This concept that children somehow are harmed or abused by wearing masks is not founded in any science. 
It's simple. Uh, it does no harm. Those 50 million children need to protect themselves by wearing masks. If I'm going to get on an airplane, I don't have to wear a mask, uh, but I will have my kids wear one. I don't think this is politically uh, dividing at all. I wear masks, my kids wear masks. I don't understand why parents are not listening to the science, not teaching their children to wear a mask. Remember how hard they pushed to tell us that our children were at risk for coronavirus? And hold on, remember the fallout from that. Look, look, we haven't even come close to recovering as a nation. Our children, we'll just make it about the children for now, from what we did during COVID. The suicides with children through the roof. The COVID push, the COVID lockdowns, the wear a mask, the close your school. It caused children to kill themselves. Right now, there are parents across the country who don't have their baby anymore because of lockdowns, suicides, drug use, alcohol use, depression. We now know students are actually skipping school at a rate we've never seen before. The learning loss, staggering amounts of learning loss. And we're not even going to talk about the personal loss, the personal experiences. This is something that you don't hear about unless you have kids that age or close to that age. How many kids didn't get to walk their graduation, wear a gown, have a good time their senior year, take a senior trip somewhere? How many kids were denied life's little rites of passage because we were told over and over and over and over and over again that we have to be afraid, that our kids are in danger, we have to be afraid? Well, what happened today? While everyone was looking up at the eclipse, Talking about Ukraine, what happened today, the Center for Disease Control just came out and they revised down their pediatric deaths from COVID-19 and they revised it down by 24%. They're calling it a coding logic error, which of course you know is a lie. The Center for Disease Control overinflated how deadly COVID was to children We've destroyed a generation of children. And today, all anyone can talk about is the eclipse. Look, they lied about everything in the Center for Disease Control. They lied about the deadliness of the disease itself to everybody. The new warning from the World Health Organization, a death rate from the coronavirus is rising. 3.4% is higher. Twice as deadly as previous estimates. 3.4%. The state of emergency. The World Health Organization says the coronavirus death rate is 3.4%. President Trump lies that the World Health Organization is wrong. The number is 3.4%. 3.4% is what it's being reported around the world. The death rate. The percentage is 3.4%. And no hunt from the president can change that. Trump lied about the most recent World Health Organization estimate that the global death rate of coronavirus is 3.4%. Dr. J. Bhattacharya. Uh, my hypothesis, my hunch, was it is likely to be less deadly than the World Health Organization was saying. 3.4%. There's no way that was true. Really a uh, false number. This is why I ran the study in April of 2020. And what did you discover? The infection fatality rate was 0.2%. 3.4%. So we all have to shut down the country, destroy our economy, destroy our way of life. It was actually point two, but they all lied. And all these numbers are now coming out about how much they lied. But the real crime is nobody will care. We can't keep up. How do you keep up with all the scandals? After all, Jesse, that was so long ago, right? It was just a few years, but it was so long ago. Jesse, there have been way too many scandals. Anyway, catch that eclipse today? Beware of the narrative. Beware of the big story everyone's talking about in any given day because there very likely are much, much, much more important stories and more nefarious stories lying right underneath. And do I need to remind everyone again that all of our way of life changed because of the idea that we had to lock down for a virus? Don't, don't forget, by the way, the American Rescue Plan. Remember that one in 2021? The American Rescue Plan. $700,000 sent to swing states like Wisconsin for illegals. So while they were destroying the economy and shutting down the country, you were stroking taxpayer-funded checks, sending them to illegals. 
when you weren't sending them to ballot boxes in Wisconsin also.